So far we've been using XAMPP in this course and XAMPP is good if you want to quickly start a new project on your local and get to work, though it lacks in features and also is not meant for production. This can introduce issues where your development environment is different from production environment and what works on your local might not work in production and vice versa. This is where Docker can help you. You can be sure that your local development environment is very close to your production environment. Docker also allows you to work on multiple projects at the same time even if the php versions are different it basically lets you bundle your development environment in isolated containers that are portable this is hard to achieve with xamp and sometimes it's impossible for example say that you have three clients or working on three different projects and all three of those use different versions of php as well as some other services docker can be used to set this up easily you can containerize your dependencies and your entire project which then can easily be shared deleted or ported over to another os as shown here, we're bundling everything that a project needs in a single container. So we have a container that has PHP, web server, database, and so on. This can work, but it probably is not ideal because you're coupling all these services into a single container. You could split these into multiple containers and have a separate container for web server, a separate container for PHP, a separate container for database, and so on. Decoupling these services is always good because you can easily swap one container out with another instead of messing with the container that contains everything. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about Docker because this course is about PHP, but I do want to cover the basics and explain the terms that you will hear and use when working with Docker like containers, images, Docker file, Docker compose, and so on. A container, as mentioned before, basically just bundles up the application with all of its dependencies and necessary configuration. You could have all of your dependencies installed under one container, or you could have separate containers for those dependencies. Docker container begins as a simple vanilla Linux machine that does not have anything installed for the application. Then we tell the container what needs to be installed like all the dependencies that are needed to run the application. This is done through a file called Dockerfile. A Dockerfile is a text file where you write instructions on how to build a Docker image. And a Docker image is a read-only executable package that includes everything needed to run your application like source code, dependencies, environment variables, configurations, and so on. So Docker images and containers are pretty much the same. The difference is that the image Images are read-only and they can exist without containers however for containers to run they need an image in a way you can think of images like templates you cannot start or run these images but instead you can use them as a base or a template to build your containers so essentially a container is just a runtime instance of an image that can now be modified these images or containers are stored in repositories they might be stored on private or public repositories like docker hub for example you can then pull those images from the repository and use them to build your containers on local staging or in production. Now if this sounds confusing to you don't worry about it I'm not an expert in Docker either I just learn as I go and Google things and watch tutorials whenever I need to work on something related to Docker. So before getting up and running with Docker we need to decide what web server to use. In the first section of the course we used Apache because that came by default with XAMPP. In this case I'm going to use the opportunity to introduce Nginx because you might want to use Nginx instead of Apache in some cases and it is a good idea to know a little bit of both. We will be installing PHP with Nginx and PHP FPM and I'll explain what FPM is. Apache by default comes with something called mod PHP. It basically means that PHP interpreter is embedded within Apache web server and runs PHP as an Apache module. If you look at the PHP info dump from our application in the browser that is running Apache with XAMPP, we see that the server API says it's Apache 2.0 handler. So that's basically indicator that we are using mod PHP. The downside of ModPHP is that the footprint for each Apache process is larger because it requires more resources when the PHP interpreter is embedded within Apache. The process will still contain PHP interpreter even when the request is for non-PHP files like static files for example. Though this can be solved by using Content Delivery Network or CDN to load your assets. But that's a topic maybe for another lesson. PHP FPM stands for PHP Fast CGI Process Manager, which is basically 
basically an alternative, more advanced implementation of FastCGI. It's a gateway that sits in between your web server and your PHP code. So when the PHP file is requested, Nginx will communicate with PHP FPM and have it process only the PHP files and not the static files like style sheets or images. Note that you could use PHP FPM with Apache as well as Nginx, but for this lesson, we'll set it up with Nginx. So should you use Nginx with PHP FPM instead of Apache? That really depends on your application and what you want to do. If you're already working on Apache, you don't need to switch to Nginx unless you're facing some issues and want to try Nginx. But usually it's not worth the time you would need to spend to switch from Apache to Nginx. If you're starting a new application, then maybe give Nginx a try. So let's get started. If you don't have Docker and Docker Compose installed on your machine, please go ahead and install them. I'm going to leave links in the description where you can follow instructions on how to install them on your operating system. I have created the necessary Docker file and Docker Compose file, and we can just go through them and I'll explain what it does. So this is the project structure for this lesson. I have the Docker directory and the source directory. Source directory will contain all the source code and Docker directory will contain all the things about Docker, Nginx, and so on. You could structure them in any way you want. You could have Docker directory within your source code if you want to. It's up to you how you want to structure it. The source directory currently only contains public directory with index.php file. An index.php file just dumps the PHP info to the screen so we can review it. And then later we'll dump the server super global to see what values we have. So let's open the Docker file. And the first line here, this is where we're pulling the image from. So we're using the PHP 8.0 FPM image. So if we go to Docker Hub and we search for PHP, we see all the images that match to the the search and then you can pick whichever you want we can go into the official php image and there we'll see all the available tags that we can use to pull from i'm using php fpm tag and you can use whatever you want you can even use the one with apache if you want to use apache instead of nginx Let's go back to the Docker file and here we see that we're installing some additional dependencies in our container. Now, I don't really need these dependencies. I just want to show you how you could install it because this is your Docker file. This is your container. You could put your custom commands or dependencies that you need to have for your application. You might also need to set up some user and group and permissions depending on what OS you're working with, but we'll stick with the simplest Docker file for this lesson. And finally, we set the work directory. So this Docker file by itself will work and we will get PHP FPM up and running. But this will launch a single container. We also need a container for the web server, right? In this case, we need a container for Nginx. We're going to need a container later for MySQL database and so on. So we will need to run multiple containers at the same time. And we can do that by using Docker CLI and some shell scripting to fire off a bunch of commands. But there is a better way. There is a tool called Docker Compose, which makes managing these containers simpler via YML files. So let's open the Docker Compose YML file here. We're using the version 3.8 and we only have two services right now. We have the app service and we have the Nginx service. So this is our web server and this is our application. In the app service, we're telling it to use the Docker file that we just created in the context of current directory. So this is loading the Docker file from here. Then we're setting the container name and a few other parameters. The important one here is the volumes. Docker volume is basically a file system that is mounted on the Docker container. The volume is stored on the host machine. So in this case, on my Windows machine, and it's referencing the source directory where the actual source code is. So this basically maps and mounts the source directory on the the host to var www directory in the container. And then we have nginx service, which is our web server, and we're using nginx 1.19 Alpine. We give it a container name, and then we map the port of the local host to the port in the container. So we can just go in the browser and type in localhost port 8000 and access the website. But that port is being mapped to the port 80 that's running in the container for nginx. This allows you to have multiple projects running at the same time on different ports. So if you had another project where you had the custom Docker Compose file for that, you could set that port to be 8001, and then you could have both projects running at the same time, one running on port 8000 and the other one running on port 8001. And same thing here for the volumes, we're sharing the source code, and also we're sharing the configuration file, because we want to use a custom configuration file for the Nginx. Let's open that and go over it quick. So as you can see, Nginx configuration file looks a lot simpler than Apache's configuration file. 
we're saying that we're listening on port 80 the index file is index.php we're setting the error and access uh, log paths and then we're setting that error page should be loaded through index.php what this means is that we're saying if we have a 404 we let our index.php handle the 404 page for us because without this we would see the default nginx 404 page which is not so user friendly this way we can have custom logic in index.php that will bootstrap our application to decide how to display 404 error page then we're setting the document root here which is var www public and then we're matching php files so here we're basically telling nginx to pass php requests to php fpm which runs in app service then we're setting the index file and including fast cgi params and setting script file name using the document root then for any non-php file we try to locate that file in the document root and if the file cannot be found then we let our index.php figure out how to load or handle that file and then we also turn on the gzip compression you can also look at the default nginx configuration file on nginx website and you can see what other options they provide that you could customize let's test this out so i'm going to open the terminal and run docker compose up and it's going to download all the necessary stuff and it has finished uh, installing everything and the containers are up right now if i hit Control c it's going to stop the containers because the in this terminal that's where the docker is running right now you can run this by using docker compose up dash d so that it's not dependent on the terminal and it can run on the background if i open another terminal here and type in docker ps i can see the currently running containers we have the docker app and nginx so everything seems to be working and if i go to the browser this this is the site on localhost which runs in xamp and as you can see this is the apache 2.0 handler so this is the one ran in xamp now if i change this to localhost port 8000 now we are in php version 8.0.2 and the server api says it's running through fpm fast cgi so it seems like it's working now we did not use a custom php ini file if you want to use custom php ini file you could do that through the docker compose as well the same way we shared the custom nginx config you could do the same thing with the php ini let's go back to the code and let's open index.php and comment out php info if we refresh the page we get a bunch of data i know we haven't covered the super globals and the server super global variable but basically that contains all the necessary information about the server and the request for example it contains the server port software gateway interface document root document uri request uri script name and so on now the cool thing about whatever we did is that no matter what page we access if i go to posts post one it will still load this which means that it is still loading index.php no matter what page we access even if we go to something like hello.php and this file does not exist in the document root so typically this would return 404 nginx default error page but if we hit this we're still getting index.php dump because we set it up that way now of course this is not ideal for the actual application we have to build out necessary logic to handle the url parsing and make sure that we direct the traffic properly which is called routing and we're going to cover routing very soon but this is a very good step towards that and that's how the most mvc frameworks work so as you can see we were able to get php up and running pretty quick with docker later in the course we're going to add on more services like mysql for database and so on a quick note that this setup is not production ready it is for development only and for production you would need to tweak some settings and adjust few things if you want to install apache with docker try to do it as an exercise by following installation guides online if you need help or have some questions post them down in the comments and i will do my best to help you out before we wrap up this video i also want to talk a little bit about another alternative to xamp which is laragon laragon is a modern replacement of XAMPP in my opinion. It has more features and lets you quickly get up and running the same way XAMPP does. It's also much easier to switch between versions and has more features like NGROC integrated to share your local website. That being said, you cannot run multiple projects on different versions at the same time. At least I was not able to get it working. I think Laragon is great and you should give it a try if you're currently using XAMPP and don't want to use Docker. I personally prefer to have the flexibility of having multiple PHP projects 
projects with different versions running at the same time and more power over configuration and dependencies. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and would like to see more, share and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one where we'll start with object-oriented PHP with classes and objects.